Damit zu unserem nächsten Speaker. Er ist äh, schon am Weg. Es ist Randy Bush. Er ist Senior Researcher bei der Firma Internet Initiative Japan und Gründer von Verio. Sein Thema IPv6 Transition and Operational Reality. It's your turn. Thank you. Um, I notice almost no one, possibly no one is wearing ear sets. No, someone is. Um, I Uh, I will make the translators a bit crazy because I have too many slides to go through and we're already running late. Um, the purpose, I, I'm half operator, half researcher, and what I'm here to tell you is we have two choices. We can have massive V4 nabbing, which means the end of the ability to innovate in trouble here? One, two, three. Okay, uh, that requires three hands. Okay, um, or we have V6. So neither are pleasant, but one is far less pleasant than the other. The bottom line is I'm far less interested in what service is available on V4 or V6 than I am in ensuring that it makes no difference to the users. They're the ones paying the money. They're the ones who should get and give packets and not care. Okay? Is the makeup person next? <laughs> There's no hope for them. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but first, you know, we can't do this unless we get real. And telling you the fantasies of V6 and how it will cure edition sex.com and make the internet work is not possible. Okay, the slides are a bit dense, um, but they're meant as a reference, so I'm going to go through rather quickly. It's going to be reality theory f uh, therapy first. The choice is massive V4 natting or V6. Get over it. The issues are when and how. Marketing fantasy is not helping. So, okay, what should have happened and didn't is that The IPv4 free pool should have exhausted slowly over time because v6 replaced it. And therefore, the cost of a v4 address would have gone up nice and slowly. What is happening is v6 deployment is not happening very fast. And my friends say that the inflection there is surprisingly optimistic for me. Um, so therefore, V4 is being exhausted very quickly, and it's about to cost you a whole lot of money to get an IPv4 address. Why is this happening? No transition plan. We declared victory before the high, hard part started. There was no long-term plan, no realistic cost, no support for the folk. Victory will be in the next six months. Does this describe the invasion of Iraq? IPv6, DNSSEC, or all of the above. <laughs> okay. There's a basic problem. IPv6 is incompatible with IPv4 on the wire. Totally incompatible. This, just to this day, and I've watched it happening for about 15 years now, is utterly shocking and totally brain dead. So, let's get rid of some V6 myths. First myth, V4 is running out. No, V4 isn't running out. There's still the same number of integers. The problem is the IANA free pool is running out. Frank Selensky drew the graphs 10 years ago that we're essentially still on today. If you want more fine detail guessing to which day it is, go see Jeff Houston's graphs. Okay, IPv4 is going to go from a free resource model to a trading model. Uh, this should be no surprise. There are many aspects of our lives today where we thought some resource was infinite, like oil, and it's getting pretty expensive. Okay, so V4 is going to be traded, and the registries are going to become, this is the address registries, not the DNS registries, are going to become title agents so that the people doing the trading know they are buying or selling something they actually have the right to. So there's going to be the certification of this stuff, and the RIRs are actually developing a full global certification software, blah, 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 blah. IPv6 transition is easy. Well, it isn't. 
It was designed with no thought to operational transition. It's on the wire and compatible. Maybe it could have been avoided if somebody had actually pushed on the design. And for instance, one of the proposals was variable length. And maybe the 32-bit variation could have had some magic in there to make it V4 compatible. So today there are no really simple, useful scaling transition or transition mechanisms. You will see at the end, if I make it that far, um, what it takes to do it. IPv6 eliminates that. Since an IPv6 site address cannot get to an IPv4 address, period, because it's incompatible, and there will be IPv4 significant for many years, IPv6 sites will need a translation mechanism, which we, since it's translating one form of address to another, is a network address translator with application layer gateways for the stuff where no simple address translation works. So therefore, IPv6 will increase NAT use in the short and medium term. But those NATs can go away eventually. Whereas if we take the IPv4 massive NATing solution, we live with them forever and their growth continues forever. Okay. IPv6 reduces routing load. Multi-homing in IPv6 is the same as V4. There is no new routing model. Traffic engineering is the same. There is no new traffic engineering model. Enterprises are going to slice and dice their IPv6 address space to handle branches, etc., just like they do with 16s and V4. So the routing table will continue to fragment more and more over time. Get over it. This is not good. It's fact. We have to deal with fact. This is the operations part of the Internet. Okay? Myth, V6 space is infinite. Well, they threw away half the bits to a LAN. If you think you can run a layer 2 network using 64 bits or using 1% of the address space of 64 bits, you don't really have experience with layer 2 networks. They don't work at that scale. Okay? This leave half the bits gone. Some poke are using 64 slash 64s for point to point. That's like something horrible we did 20 years ago with RIP protocol. RIRs are giving away slash 32s. In 15 years, we're going to think of those like we think of the slash 8 todays. And let's remember also that we once thought 32 bits was enough. We really did. We thought 32 bits was... Okay. IPv6 is more secure. Well, it was supposed to be, but it doesn't do anything. It promised, but it didn't deliver. IPsec is the recipe in either case, but IPv IPsec was promised to be mandatory in v6, whereas IPv6, IPsec is rarely deployed. The reason? It's very hard to deploy. It's hell to configure it. Okay? And it doesn't work in a mixed V4, V6 environment. Think of the hotel we have, which is a V4 only network, trying to get to a V6 site over VPN. It's true that address space scanning will be somewhat harder. But all that's doing is a market opportunity for some enormous botnet to go around and look for the victim address space and then sell that as a marketplace. So those of you who round out of domain name scams can move there. <laughs> Incremental deployment. For an enterprise, the entire chain, from the back end, through millions of lines of application code, through firewalls, to the border router, to load balancers, etc., have to all handle V6 for the enterprise to deploy V6 for it to deliver it, okay? For ISPs, you have provisioning systems, back-end, monitoring, measurement, billing. It's a large conversion. And everyone needs support all the way from all their vendors, all their vendors. Another myth, routers fully support V6, yeah, but not 100% in hardware. Bunch of stuff ends up going up what we call the slow path, being routed by software forwarded by software, pardon me, especially not if you add um, access lists to protect you from fake addressing and other forms of attack. 